Here at uh, ASCO 2011, we are on the home turf of uh, Dr. Howard Kaufman. He is uh, director of the Rush University Cancer Center. What's this like having this huge monstrosity of an event come to your town every year? Well, we always enjoy having it in Chicago. It gives us an opportunity to showcase what, what's going on in the city and at our center. And it's always good to hear about the latest in uh, cancer research. Okay, let's get into talking about your study. Sure. So we've been interested in the development of vaccines and immunotherapy for a number of different cancers, including renal cell, for a long time. And this is really one of the first vaccines that's actually proceeded into the phase three setting and was extensively evaluated in over 700 patients. And although overall it didn't have an impact, there were subgroups of patients that did appear to have a benefit. For example, one subgroup was a group that got the vaccine in IL-2. So what we wanted to do was see if there were certain markers that we could identify in the patients that would help us predict up front who might respond. And we actually found three of them. Those were the patient's hemoglobin level, their hematocrit, and the presence of an antibody response against the antigen in the vaccine. And when we put all of those together, we found that it was highly predictive of patients likely to get a progression-free survival benefit in that study. What surprised us was when we took those same parameters and extended it to other vaccine studies in other diseases, for example, in prostate cancer or in colorectal cancer, we found that it was also predictive there. So the conclusion of our study is that this may in fact be a rather simple predictive biomarker to identify patients likely to respond to vaccines and immunotherapy. So would you consider the results to be successful? I think so because the field for a long time has been trying to identify a marker that could help identify which patients are likely to respond and as it turns out, even though we studied some very complex, difficult things, these are actually very easy to measure and could really provide some insight into why certain people can respond to immunotherapy in general. And of course we would like to validate this prospectively in future studies as we move forward. Why is immunotherapy such a hot topic today? Well, I think the thing about immunotherapy that's different from other forms of therapy is that it is often associated with complete responses. And in fact, many patients can often be even cured of their disease, uh, certainly looking at long-term follow-up of patients treated with high-dose interleukin-2. And for many years, it's, it's sort of been a challenge to identify other immunotherapy approaches and to try to see them expand those um, kinds of results in a larger number of patients. And for the first time, we're beginning to see that. So with the FDA approval of ipilimumab in melanoma, there's a lot of renewed interest in this kind of approach. And there are a lot of other agents that are in rapid early phase clinical development right now based on the exciting uh, news that we've had this week. What would you do next based upon your findings? Well, I, I think the next step is to really try to see if we can validate this by using it to better select patients up front, get them into studies of immunotherapy, and our hypothesis would be that they're much more likely to have a good response. And again, with immunotherapy, a good response can be translated into a durable uh, disease control, if not in, even a cure. Doctor, thanks for stopping by and sharing your work with us. Best of luck in the future. Absolutely. Thank you. Dr. Howard Kaufman, director of the Rush University Cancer Center here in the host city of Chicago, Illinois at ASCO 2011.